are now tuned in to this week's episode of our podcast. Today, we are going to interview some of the greatest and most influential minds in our field. By sharing our collective expertise, we will show you how to harness, control, and use your own skill set to achieve ultimate success. Hey, on the show once again, this is Omar Blast TV. You're also on the Bob Show with Omar Blast TV. Now, on the Bob Show, we would like to focus on what has not worked and what will make it work. Focusing on government and politics, with other subtopics on environment and also society and culture. Today, I have Joyce Segal, who is a documentary filmmaker and podcast host, whose goal is to make the world better for everyone. Hi, George. Welcome to the show. Hi, Omar. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for joining me on the show. Now, George, you've covered complex stories about people who lost everything in disasters. Um, I'd like you to share uh, with me a personal true life experience in this respect. Well, in my most recent documentary film, The Last House Standing, we went to Mexico Beach in Panama City, Florida, where people were wiped out by a Category 5 hurricane. And it was uh, it's it's disheartening and sad to see people that have lost everything that they have. And the road to recovery after a, a disaster is a very long one. People don't realize if your house is destroyed and you're starting over with nothing, you don't just get a new house the next day. People don't just come out and fix things right away. You go into a system where your insurance company has to file. You know, they have to receive the claim. Then they have to agree to pay the claim. Then you have to go through the process of rebuilding your house, buying all your items again. And it can take years. Some people never recover from disasters. And it was very sad to hear those stories. We also interviewed people in Malibu, California, that lost their homes in a wildfire out there. And uh, it's tragic. And so my goal is to help people avoid having that happen to them. How can a disaster hit you, but not completely derail your life and screw up your life? And and that's what I'm trying to do. Awesome. Now, talking about natural disasters and assessing hazards and risk, I'd like us to talk about this. How can it help withstand this natural phenomenon? Well, this is some man made. You know, it depends. Uh, so many of so much of it is hard to control. If you look at the United States, we have some of the most active weather patterns of anywhere in the world. Each area of the country has its own disaster. And so you say, is it natural or is it man-made? Well, man is now moving into more areas that are back in the woods, right by the water, out in the open spaces of the middle part of the country. So we're putting ourselves in the bullseye for a potential disaster. And then we act surprised when a disaster happens. Well, we're not doing everything we can to make ourselves as safe as possible. So we're setting ourselves up to be victims and it happens all the time. I, I'm, I'm guilty of that. I live in Tampa, Florida. I live in a flood zone. I live in an area that could have got a major hurricane last year if Hurricane Ian had hit us, and, and we would have possibly been wiped out. So we all take risks. The question is, how prepared are you for it? Oh, really? Now, since talking about natural disasters, how can it impact a home's value? I'm sorry, can you tell me that? ask me that again? Uh, uh... How do natural disasters, how does it impact uh, the home's value? How does it impact the homeowners? Yes, well, home value, home value. I, the, our connection is really bad. Okay. I'm not hearing your question. Okay, how do natural disasters, how does it impact a home's value? The value of I, a home? You know, I think it has a major value depending on what happens. So for example, if you live in a $5 million house on the beach, and it gets wiped out, well, there's now a record that that house is vulnerable and can get wiped out. Now, I think people have short memories. So if you rebuild, um, you know, maybe you get your money back. Maybe you maybe you make money if it depends on what happens around you in um, in the other areas. But a lot of people lose the value of their house. We interviewed one woman who lived in a duplex in Panama City, and the unit next to her was completely destroyed and hers was badly damaged. Well, a developer came in and paid the neighbor who was the other part of the duplex like pennies on the dollar. And who knows what they're going to do with it? Well, the woman we interviewed cannot rebuild her property because they're not rebuilding their property. So her investment is now worth nothing. And it really depends on where you are and, and what the result is of that disaster. But I would imagine a lot of people lose an incredible amount of value in their property. And a lot of people have older homes and it costs a lot more to rebuild it. 
So I may live in a $300,000 house, but the houses around me are now two or $3 million. So my house gets destroyed. What am I putting back on that lot? It's a very tough situation if you don't think those things through and understand what would my path back be? Am I buying this inexpensive house or living here? Knowing if it is destroyed, I'm starting over. You know, you have to understand what your risks are. And I would venture to say that most families don't sit and have that meeting. Hey, what are we going to do if a disaster hits us? They probably never talk about it. All right. So that means that's what we ought to be talking about now. Now, um, is it a good idea to review what homeowner's insurance covers when it comes to applying for homeowner's uh, insurance policy? Can you talk about that? Absolutely. We talked to the morning show host of a, a radio station in Panama City, and he got call after call from people after Hurricane Michael that said they had never read their insurance policy. You know, it's a it's a long document. It could be 40 or 50 pages long. And most people assume, well, I, I can't renegotiate this document. So why am I reading it? And the, the reality is you need to understand it. And, and if you don't want to read it, have the insurance agent who sold you that policy explain it to you clearly so you know what are the exclusions. Some people live in an area where there are fires, but they don't have coverage if there's a wildfire. Most people that live in a hurricane area don't have flood insurance unless they purchase a separate policy. Um, you get certain, uh, some insurance policies will say if it's a named storm, your damages, you, your payments cover certain things. If it's a category five, I know with Hurricane Michael, they wanted it declared a Category 5 because other certain coverages would have kicked in for people, and they eventually called it a Category 5 instead of a Category 4. So you really need to understand that policy, understand what you're uh, covered for if you have to rent a home for a long period of time, if you're displaced. What about the contents of your house? If you live in a house, as I mentioned earlier, that's a $400,000, $300,000 house, what is your rebuilding cost in that insurance policy? Because obviously you cannot put another $300,000 house on that lot if everything else is worth more. So you really need to understand that policy. And most people don't want to put the time into it or they think, well, I just have this policy. You know, it's like, I know people that have health insurance, but they never get sick. So they go, why am I wasting my money on this? You can't think of insurance that way. You don't think of it as, well, I, I didn't get destroyed this year, so I don't need my policy next year. It's something you should always have, and hopefully you don't need it, but it's the cost of doing business. It's the cost of living there. You absolutely need to have it. That's your last line of defense. Really. Um, George, you also have an expertise on resilient buildings. Uh, one of the topics you cover in your expertise. Um, on designing the resilient buildings in that modern age, uh, are there better buildings initiatives that we need to start considering at this time? You know, that it, in a perfect world, we would have builders that say, I'm going to build the safest house possible. We would have city officials that say, I'm going to have the strongest building codes possible. And that together they would work to keep people safe. Throw all that out the window. Builders have a lobbying group to keep the building code as low as possible. They don't want a stronger building code. And city officials, it's very difficult to get politicians. I don't know what it's like where you are. Here, to get people to see if the sky is blue or gray is like pulling teeth because they're going to argue depending on what side of the aisle they're on. So changing building codes is very difficult. It doesn't happen easily. So I encourage homeowners to do their part and demand more from their builder. If a builder says, I'm building your house to code, run. He's doing the minimum. He's doing the absolute minimum. And I've interviewed people who say, a, a true builder, architect, designer thinks, what is the code for the future? How can this house survive as time goes on? Not what can I put up today that's going to be okay? And I'm trying to remember, I think it's Rocket Mortgage has a commercial where they say just okay is the expression. And, and unfortunately, that's what we settle for with our houses, just okay. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm quite candid. I'm not a fan of the construction industry from my experiences. And I, I wish people would demand more from these people because they're not giving us their best in most Absolutely. cases. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, still talking about resiliency, uh, George, what can nature teach us about resiliency in terms of the aftermath of a hurricane where trees, earth, and structures are served? Right? Well, Mother Nature's uh, undefeated, right? Eventually, she wants to take back what we've uh, put there. So... 
what we've learned is the more resilient a structure is built, the more thought that's put into having it survive, the more likely it is to survive. So the house that we featured in uh, Mexico Beach, Florida, from Hurricane Michael had pylons that went 38 feet into the sand. 